Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Have you ever heard somebody say, if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all? That's what we call Lordship Salvation. Let's talk about it, but let's pray first. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you that we are saved by your grace and not of anything that we could ever possibly do or keep doing. And uh, we just thank you for your precious word. Help us to open that up and make some, make some stuff just real clear and plain today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so this teaching um, generally comes from your Calvinistic uh, group, all right? That is your, your five-point Calvinists. And among those guys, you would find uh, John MacArthur. You would find Paul Washer. You would find John Piper. And uh, these guys are all five-point Calvinists. And what do we mean by five-point Calvinist? Um, we've done several videos on the topic, but I'll just give you a quick review. All right. The five points of Calvinism are from the acrostic tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints. All right. So uh, the Lordship salvation uh, basically comes from the perseverance of the saints. In, in other words, that if you are saved... In, in, their, in their frame of thinking, if you were one of those elect that God chose to be saved and uh, uh, that the, how you will know that you're saved is that you persevere in the faith. In other words, uh, if you live saved, <laughs> then you must be saved. If you don't live saved, you're not saved. That's Lordship salvation. Uh, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Um, so basically, if uh, in that interpretation, um, <laughs> hey, I wasn't saved for a long time after I got born again. Amen. Because what? Because I was backslidden because I was running from God. Now, did that cancel out my salvation? Well, no, of course it didn't. It, of course it didn't. And we're going to look at that because there's, there's only three kinds of people on the face of this planet and you'll find those if you go with me to the book of first corinthians and we'll go to chapter two right and you can figure out where you fit where anybody fits in these three classifications of people amen all right chapter two first corinthians paul says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? He says in verse 14, there's a such thing as a natural man. That's the man that Paul talks about when he says, if any man have not the Spirit of God, he's none of his. This is an unsaved man. This is a man who has not been born again by the Spirit of God. This is a, this is a lost person. A person lost without the Spirit of God on their way to hell. Simple. Classification number one, natural man, lost person. Number two, goes on. Look in verse 15, he says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. All right. So now there's a spiritual man. All right. And, and, and he's talking about that. Uh, uh, you can't tell this guy anything. He's, he's in tune with God. All right. This is the Christian who is submitted, who is yielded to the indwelling Holy Spirit. All right. This is the Christian who is, as Paul said, uh, crucifying the flesh, dying daily, walking in the Spirit. That is your spiritual man, the man with that close walk with the Lord. Now, he's not, he's not sinlessly perfect. Nobody is. 
because we have this body of, of flesh. But this is the man who is striving to crucify the flesh, yield to the Holy Spirit, and hey, when he messes up, he keeps short accounts, and he gets that thing right quick. Amen? He don't just keep going off and off and off into his sin. The spiritual man. The spiritual man, hey, anytime, anytime that, 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 that walk deviates, hey, gets it back. Hey, we all deviate. <laughs> you think you are, uh, are uh, sinlessly perfect at any point in time? <sighs> hey, I wouldn't count on my best five seconds on this planet to get me to heaven. Amen? Amen. All right. So that's the spiritual man. But there's a third. There's a third. Look what Paul says in chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. We say, well, that's a, that's a, that's a natural man. No, no, no. Keep reading. Even as unto babes in Christ. Look for, jump down to verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strife, divisions... Are you not carnal and walk as men? All right? That's the carnal Christian. And I, I don't even like to use the word Christian because that is the carnal saved person. Because really, Christian technically means Christ-like. Uh, Christian is a, a disciple, is, is a committed, obedient follower. So when, when you're backslidden, are you really a Christian? Well, you sure aren't living like one, but I mean, you're saved. Yes, you're saved. Yes. So you enter into some, some semantics right there, but that basically that what we're looking at is these three, these three distinctions in people. There's a lost person. There's a person that's saved and is walking with the Lord. And there's a person who is saved. Yet is what? What did he say? Are ye not carnal and walk as men? What men? <laughs> well, you're walking like an unsaved man. You're saved, but you're carnal, and you're living like an unsaved person. All right? Now, what does that do to this whole doctrine of, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all? That puts the lie to lordship salvation salvation is not dependent upon your works you are the bible likens to you like a tree and you are to bear fruit amen but even even the best trees have barren seasons even the best trees go through dry and productive seasons and struggle. And that is the Christian life. And as many of us know, man, hey, me, number one, I ran from God for years after I was saved. And what did I do? I was a carnal believer. I walked as men. I lived like an unsaved person. Now, you can't get away with it because you're God's child now. And he's not going to allow you to go back and prosper in, in that hog wall of like, he, like you used to when you were a natural man, when you were an unsaved man, you were a child of the devil, and you could prosper in your sin and be blessed in your sin and enjoy it. But see, once you get saved, I say this all the time, you can't run from somebody that lives inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit in there. So once you get saved... If you want your joy, you want your peace, you want your victory as a spiritual man, then you yield and submit and walk in the Holy Spirit. But when you don't yield and submit and walk in the Holy Spirit, then what comes in? Well, the whole new paradigm of conviction and chastisement, because every son whom he receives, he chastens. <laughs> Amen. So no, when, when you belong to God, there's consequences for sin. And when you belong to God, and the, the, your loving Father is going to correct you. And it may not be to something I mean, huge and drastic and, and, and earth-shattering, because, listen, he's the good physician. He knows 
just the right dose of medicine to, to cure what ails you. Amen. And it may be just, just, just a point of you, you lose your joy. You lose your peace. You lose your victory. And you think, oh, oh, man, I, I don't like feeling like this. I don't like living like this. I will return to my father. Amen. And so you begin to say, man, no, no, I, I, I'm killed. This flesh is killing me. This flesh is beating me up. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm going to get into my word. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to get this thing right with God. I'm going to get back walking in the spirit. See, I want to be a spiritual man, not a carnal man. But both are saved. So, yeah, don't, don't listen to this. It's a pharisaical, self-righteous doctrine that is based on the heresy of five-point Calvinism. Five-point Calvinism. Listen, they don't believe they ever received the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't believe they ever chose Christ. They, they believe that before the foundation of the world, that, that God just saved them, and they had absolutely nothing to do with it, and they were born again before they ever even heard of Christ. <laughs> that's how. That's what they. That says. Well, if that's the case, how do I know I ever? I, I'm saved. Well, if you're living right, you're one of the elect. You see. You see how that's just a uh, 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 backloading works into salvation, and how that is another way of adding works to salvation, and that's not God's way. So, hey, just keep in mind, lordship salvation. Uh, the teachings of the, the Calvinistic teachers, the Paul Washers, the John MacArthur's, the John Pipers, etc., etc., etc. It's based on faulty theology. It's based on following the writings and the teachings of John Calvin, not the King James Bible. Amen? Amen. I hope that was a help to you today and straighten out that issue for you because uh, uh, the devil will use that to try to beat you up and try to make you think you ain't saved. When you don't need to get saved, you just need to get right with God. Amen. All right. God bless you. We'll see you in the next one.